tonight we are going to do some measurements on this Kenwood amplifier. Kenwood KA7100. This is a, a model that was uh, available in the mid to late 70s. Uh, and if you're watching this video, you are probably already aware that Kenwood was one of the greats back in the day. So we're going to measure its power output, check a few things. Uh, I got this off eBay, haven't fired it up yet. So it's in very good condition physically. So we're going to take a look and see how well it works electrically. All right, so I've removed the cover from this amplifier. So we'll just point out a few things here. Uh, Kenwood is uh, probably among other manufacturers that notice this shaft that goes all the way to the back. Uh, a lot of the, the preamplifier phono preamp is way back here, so they don't have to run wires all over the place. Uh, that can possibly cause additional noise pickup. So that's a pretty smart idea. There is a transformer here. No doubt it has two secondaries because we can see that there are four capacitor banks, or four capacitors, two banks, and two rectifier circuits, which uh, undoubtedly is for the dual power supply. And down in here you can see the uh, output transistors for the speaker's uh, main drive. And then, uh, of course, up here you've got all your tone controls and then basic preamplifier section. So there's really not too much to these things. Uh, design is fairly straightforward. Uh, it's very fixable. If there's something goes wrong, most of these parts uh, could be easily available and if not, substituted. So... Uh, and actually, they, I noticed they've got a thermistor here to keep the thing uh, from overheating and burning up in case somebody was to do something stupid. So it's a nice looking amp, so we're going to uh, do some measurements on it very soon. Okay, so I've removed the uh, bottom panel. And one thing I like about this is they do label the circuit board as to what, what the parts are. But the main thing I want to look at here is... The capacitors i'm going to check the voltage across them and from there i can tell what the rails are on the power supply and then from that we can calculate the absolute maximum power that it could possibly put out more than likely it would not be able to support that but we'll measure it anyway so we have a reference okay i've just measured the rails and i i can't show it because i've only got two hands here but each one is it's about plus and minus 47 and a half volts uh, open circuit, no load. So uh, we'll grab a calculator and we'll uh, run some quick numbers here. Let's see if I can find the calculator. Uh, here it is. All right, so 47. 47 volts, but that's uh, DC. So if we're talking about a sine wave for RMS, 47 divided by 1.414 comes out to 33 volts and we square that so y to the second and then we're going to divide that by 8 for 8 ohm power 138 watts uh, very optimistic since this is rated at uh, 60 watts per channel I believe and at 4 ohms it would be double that but that's an unregulated amount so that's what it could put out as a sine wave uh, basically at when I say it was uh, 47 divided by uh, square root of 2, 47 divided by 1.414, 33 volts is uh, the biggest RMS sine wave you could get out of this thing. Open circuit, no load. Under load, I'm sure it's going to be far less than that, and we will, uh, we will find out. Okay, so what I've done, got the amplifier set up here, signal generator. Some dummy load resistors, 8 ohms, 80 watts, a meter setup, and the oscilloscope. So what I'm going to do, I've got this currently set to 1000 hertz, and I'm going to start cranking up the volume on one of the, i got one channel lit only right now, and we're going to look at this waveform, and you can see where it starts to flat top, that's clipping, so we want to set it just below that, so right about there. Then we take a look at this voltage here, 24.3 volts RMS at 1000 hertz. So what we do is we take that number, we'll just call it 24. 24 times 24 equals 
divided by 8 equals 72 watts. That's putting out right now RMS watts. Uh, RMS watts is a whole other thing, but 72 watts is what it's putting out right now. So we'll, Now if I take a look at the other channel, actually I got both channels driven. We'll take a look at that one. That one, I can smell the resistors heating up. That one's not so much uh, flat top and it's doing something strange. So there could be uh, a weak capacitor somewhere in there, but that sine wave is pretty clean. Up to about the same amount of voltage. So this thing is definitely, uh, seems like it's working well enough. So that's at one kilohertz. So we're going to try it at some other frequencies now. All right, so now I've dialed it down to 20 hertz, which is uh, pretty low. So what we're going to do is uh, we got to adjust the time base on this thing. Um, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put it up until it starts uh, flat topping and right in there. So let's see what we got. Right about there, it's still clean. 23.6 volts. So that's going to be a similar amount of power. So if we do uh, 23.6 and what the hell, y to the second divided by 8, 69.6 watts. So easily putting out the 60 watts per channel. A little bit of headroom there. You can see happening here is right up there where it's starting to flat top notice it's not really flat it's slanted that's uh there's both channels there that's because the power supply isn't able to hold up over those low frequencies as well so that's what's going on there uh, if i go even more you can see where it's sagging that's where it's really struggling to hold that up so that's if the power supply was completely stiff it would just be a flat top but at 20 hertz uh and this is just a resistive load, let alone uh, inductive speaker load. It's a relatively easy load. But it is very clean there. And right about there is where it starts. And again, we're up at the 23 volt RMS region, which is uh, up around 70 watts or so into an 8 ohm load. So now we're going to go to the other extreme. We'll uh, dial it up to about... 20 kilohertz. All right, 20 kilohertz. So I got to change this time base. It's nice and clean there. We're gonna do the same. Let me spit it out a little more. All right. And yeah, we'll uh, turn this volume up. And you can see right there the that's where it's maxing out somewhere in there. Uh, now this meter showing uh, 20 almost 21 volts but getting a little high for that meeting meter it's an rms meter but we can uh try to get a rough idea here let's see we'll uh round this zero this and we are uh what the hell we are 10 volts per division so it's about i don't know 33 peak maybe let me turn this down so i don't kill these resistors so 33 divided by 1.414 equals yeah 23 it's it's about the same it's putting out the same 70 watts or so so easily this thing uh it's rated at 60 per channel and it's uh it's doing it it's got some headroom uh the other thing to note though is uh we should measure the ac voltage because that will also determine how much power comes out of an amp so let me uh, do that right now. All right, now. I just measured the line voltage. It was 120.9, so that's a good amount of voltage. So if the uh, line voltage was a little bit low, maybe 110, then, uh, of course, the power supply is not going to be able to put out as much voltage, and therefore you won't get quite as much wattage out of it. But overall, with a standard line voltage, uh, this thing's doing nicely. So now we're going to hook up a speaker to it. All right, so I've got this 18-inch uh, sub I need to break in, so I will uh, hook this thing up, and uh, we'll, we'll put it through its paces. 
got this thing running. This is a 4 ohm speaker. I'm only going to run one channel. That's the left channel. That's 62.7 hertz. If I start cranking this up, I don't know how good the quality is of the sound, but as I go higher, once it starts clipping, you'll hear the harmonics. That buzzing in there is uh, when it starts to go non-linear, and the speaker's going to reproduce that. But we want to try some low frequencies here. So we'll dial this down. This sub, uh, alright, here's, well, let's put it to 30 hertz. 30, 30 hertz. Now it's going to start vibrating everything around here. It's just starting to clip there. Everything's shaking around here. All right, this amp's supposed to go down pretty low, so let's let's drop this frequency down some more. I'm going to go to 20 hertz. This speaker, when it's in a subwoofer, is going to be flat down to 20 hertz, so. Dialing that in very soon here. Uh, there's 19.94 hertz. So free air. Bit. Everything's shaking. I gotta change the scale on this scope. there so I forgot where it was what voltage was that all right two divisions at 20 volts per division so let's run some numbers so that's about 40 volts uh, 40 uh, divided by square root of 2 28 volts RMS. Square that. Y to the second equals. And we're going to divide this by 4 because this is a 4 ohm speaker. That's saying it's 200 watts going in there. I, I don't know if I quite believe that. That seems uh, optimistic. But let me, let me double check my measurements. Yeah, I just checked it with the fluke meter, and it's uh, up around 27, 28 volts. So this this thing's actually putting out some serious juice at uh, at four ohms. If this thing really is four ohms at this frequency, it's hard to say without actually measuring it. But this speaker is able to. Uh, that's that's probably a good inch or more of travel. Everything on the bench is coming apart here. Let's try uh, 10 hertz. Let's dial this down. If this goes down that low, I think it will. All right, here's 10 hertz. And this amplifier is putting it out. Definitely putting it out. Shit. Shit's coming down. Whole freaking bench is shaking. What happens if I put the uh, GoPro on the speaker? <laughs> I 
<laughs> it's gonna go flying. Let's drop it down even lower. Ah, it won't go lower. Ten is the limit. That's pretty low, though. That would not be audible. Well, this speaker is able to handle uh, free air. That's about 200 watts going into that thing. So, pretty cool. That was as big as this woofer is. It kind of pales in comparison to this pile 21 inch woofer, which is just absolutely massive. And that's a project for another day.